Hello, my name is Jason. Welcome to my channel, Small Optics. Now, if you're a new telescope owner and you've had a chance to have a look at the planets, uh, one thing that's probably surprised you is just how small they look in the eyepiece. Now, don't worry, your telescope's not uh, broken or anything like that. This is the, you know, this is a normal thing. Um, but this could lead on to the main subject of today's video, and that is not to overpower your telescope. Now, I blame a lot of this, especially today, on this, the internet, okay? Um, we're inundated these days with such great pictures like I'm showing here, and uh, this leads on to expectation, okay? Especially in beginners. You think that this is what you're going to see through the eyepiece. You're, you're full of expectation, you get your telescope, you have a look, and you're expecting to see this. And unfortunately, you're going to see this. Now, I say unfortunately, um, I shouldn't be saying unfortunately, because that's amazing, okay? If you are seeing, like, the rings of Saturn, it's amazing, all right? And, um, and and this is what you need to do. You need to turn expectation into appreciation, okay? And, uh, and, and the problem is, right, it's very, very difficult, actually, to overpower a telescope. Um, and you, just with the eyepieces that uh, are provided with your telescope, uh, usually they're a 10 millimeter or a 25 millimeter or something like this. Sometimes we'll throw a, a slightly uh, high, higher uh, magnification in, like an eight or a nine in there. But with those eyepieces alone, it's impossible to overpower your telescope, okay? Now, where the problem comes is uh, Barlow lenses. Okay, now I've got a Barlow lens at, at Andy in a minute, but I'm sure you know what I mean, and I'm, I'm sure you've probably may have even got one provided with your telescope. Now, the reason, one of the reasons I'm, I'm making this video is I didn't realize just how much of a problem this is, because I have read often, right, it often crops up in forums, on other people's uh, comment sections on their channels, uh, a comment, something like this, can't wait for my five times Barlow to arrive with my four millimeter eyepiece. <laughs> now, this is where the problem arises, okay? Now, first off, okay, you need to know, well, it's like any, let's, let's, let's rewind a bit, okay? You need to know, to, to, to not overpower your telescope, the first thing you're gonna need to know is what is the maximum power of your telescope, all right? Whether it's a small um, uh, 70 millimeter refractor like this, or a uh, 130 millimeter reflector like this, whatever it is, if it's a 60 millimeter refractor, if it's a six inch reflector, whatever, okay? There's a very easy way to know what the maximum is, okay? Uh, in this case, 70 millimeter refractor, maximum magnification 140 times, okay, or there or thereabouts. In this one here, a uh, 130 millimeter reflector, uh, maximum magnification around about 260 times. Now, if you're any good at maths, you may have clicked onto what I've done there. I've simply taken the aperture in millimeters and times it by two, okay? And that's how you're gonna find out uh, your maximum mag magnification, no matter what size your telescope is. It doesn't matter about the focal length, how long it is, okay? It's this that's important. Just times the aperture, okay, in, in millimeters by two, or double it, okay? So if you've got a 60 millimeter refractor, 120 times is going to be there about the maximum magnification that that telescope will uh, take, okay? Now, Think of a telescope a little bit like a pressure valve or um, a car engine, okay? It's got a maximum to it, okay? And you start pushing beyond that maximum, usually bad things happen, you know, engines blow up and uh, pressure valves blow or whatever. Now, I'm not saying your telescope's gonna blow up, but this is what'll happen, okay? If, like, you want to get the image up, right, and you want to see more detail, so you get your five times Barlow, you ship your four, four millimeter uh, eyepiece in there, and you'll probably get an image something like this. Now, yeah, 
Nice size, all right, but you've just got this big fuzzy blob, okay? And, and, and you'll not even be able to probably get it in the field of view. If you do get it in the field of view, it, if you've not a motorized telescope in any way, it's gonna be out of the field of view in, in seconds, okay? Now you're also gonna need to know uh, the power of what each eyepiece does with your telescope, okay? For instance, a 10 millimeter uh, uh, eyepiece in this telescope is gonna magnify completely different to this one, okay? A 10 millimeter, if I, if I take the same eyepiece out, take it out of there, put it into this one, it's gonna magnify more in this one. Now, it's not because the telescope's bigger or anything like that, uh, as in aperture, I mean. It's in focal length now, okay? So the way we work this one out is we ne you need to know the focal length of your, of your telescope. And it's usually on a, a sticker uh, above the focus here. Just have a look. It usually says FL or something like that, focal length. Now, what you need to do is get, again, it'll be in millimeters. So let's take, for instance, this one, okay? It's a 900 focal length, okay? And we want to know what a 10 millimeter eyepiece is gonna magnify in this. Well, that's, it's easy this, all you do is you multiply, so it's, it's uh, sorry, you take 900 and you divide it by the uh, millimeter of the eyepiece. So in our case, it's 10, okay? 900 divided by 10, 90. So there you go, 90 times. I know straight away, the maximum of this telescope is 260, okay? Remember, I've just doubled the aperture and a, a 10 millimeter eyepiece in here is round about 90 times. Now, all you need to do is do exactly the same with uh, whatever focal length is with your telescope, okay? For instance, if yours is a 650, okay, we divide, and we're using a 10 millimeter eyepiece, divide that by 10, that's a 65 times magnification, okay? So you can see that focal length uh, affects the magnification of the eyepiece. It's not so much the aperture. And this leads on to another misconception about telescopes. Okay, if I was to say to you, what does a telescope do? Okay, or if you say this to the average person on the street, they would probably say, it magnifies things, it brings things closer. Well, both those answers are wrong, okay? It's the eyepiece of the telescope that magnifies. Well, it's not even of the telescope, is it really? I mean, an eyepiece is a separate thing. Without an eyepiece, unless you're putting a camera in there, a telescope's pretty useless, okay, if you think about it. What a telescope actually does is it collects light, okay? This is why uh, I, when you get into uh, astronomy more, you're just gonna want bigger, 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 okay? More light is, you're always hungry for more light because what more light's gonna do is gonna bring the image a lot brighter, enabling you to put on a little bit more power, but not too much. Remember, there's a maximum to any telescope, whether it's this big, or this big, or this big. Everything's got a maximum. Now, my best advice for you on this one, right, is to go nowhere near the maximum of your telescope, okay? I think I've been to the maximum of this twice since I've owned it. I think I did a video, uh, well, I don't think I did do a video pushing it beyond its limits on the moon. And with the moon, you're probably gonna get away with it, but the planets, you're not, okay? And just as a little bit of an experiment and a bit, a bit of, of fun, you see. But as a, as a rule, um, I can spend an entire evening round about 36 times magnification, okay? That's just with a 25 millimeter eyepiece in this telescope, okay? And this is what you're going to quickly find out. Lower magnifications will give you the best views, all right? High magnifications, um, need a lot of things to come into play, okay? You need to have good clarity, good sky conditions, okay? If you're using a reflector, it's gotta be spot on in collimation, yeah? There's, there's so many things. When you use high magnification, if any wobble that's introduced into the telescope from the mount or whatever, that's also gonna be magnified, don't forget. If you're magnified 90 times, let's say, Every, magnet, every little touch you put on the telescope is also magnified 90 times, all right? So j just keep that uh, power down moderate, you know what I mean? 
So if you remember what I said earlier in the video about these comments I'm seeing about uh, five time Barlow's with four millimeter eye, um, eyepieces. Well, I've, I mean, I've even had to write this down, the numbers are that big. I'm, I'm no mathematician. I'd never make a professional astronomer, put it that way. Um, so look, let's, let's take this. We've got a 900 foot scope. I'm going to put a four millimeter eyepiece into it. Okay, so uh, 900 divided by four, we've got 225 times. Now remember, 230 is the maximum of this telescope. So we're already getting close up to the maximum with just the eyepiece alone, okay? We, <laughs> we now put a five times Barlow in there. We've now got an incredible 1,125 times magnification. It's just not going to happen, folks, okay? It, it won't work. You're wasting your money, all right? Um, Barlow's do have their place, but I can tell you now, in all the years I've been doing astronomy, I don't know anybody that uses a five times Barlow for visual astronomy, okay? Usually these powerful Barlow's are designed for astrophotography, okay? Are usually designed for cameras with small, ch small chip cameras, basically, to boost that image size up a little bit. For visual, they're just not practical Now, enough. if you are going to buy a Barlow lens, here's a Barlow lens here, okay? Go for something like a two times Barlow, maximum three times, okay, for visual work. And even better, if you can get a Barlow with a removable cell piece, okay, and what I mean by that is the bottom, uh, will twist off. Now, not all Barlow's come like this, but some do. And what you can do with this is, if you screw this into the filter thread of the eyepiece, this actually puts, uh, gives you two Barlow's, if you like, uh, turning it into a 1.5 Barlow. All right, so, you, so you're getting uh, good value for your money with these. But like I say, just avoid, for visual astronomy, these high five times Barlow. Like I say, maximum three times. You don't want any more than that for visual work. So just to round this one up, remember, don't use too much power, okay? Remember, little power, l l less is more, basically, all right? So... Always, always start whatever you're viewing, okay, with your lowest powered eyepiece, whether that's the planets, the uh, a, a galaxy, whatever. Lowered powered eyepiece always, and gradually increase the power. Now, this, all those maths I told you about working out, you know, what eyepiece, it'll become second nature to you, okay? You'll not worry about it too much when you get into the hobby more. It's kind of, you get obsessed with it when you first start, okay? Okay, like I say, uh, of, oh, I wonder how much power it is. I wonder how powerful the telescope is. And it kind of separates for beginners from seasoned astronomers. You see, a beginner will say, how powerful is your telescope? A seasoned astronomer will say, what aperture is your telescope? Okay, and there's the difference. Well, that about wraps it up for another video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed, maybe hit that subscribe button because you never know, that next video might be just the one you've been looking for. In the meantime, don't forget, keep that power to a uh, reasonable level and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.